setting ground rules and expectations in a relationship in the Philippines. Um, this is something I, me and my wife did uh, early on um, because I'd already read about other people's issues and although I didn't have them in our relationship, um, not for my wife or her parents, we did end up with some issues where some of the extended family um, in Philippine culture, there's this debt of gratitude um, where whoever pays for a child's education is expecting to ride on the back of them financially until the, the day they pop their clogs. Um, kids are an insurance policy, basically. Uh, the debt of gratitude is one issue. Um, basically, I turn around and it's like, that is not my problem. And don't think you can tap into my cash flow. Um, but did it in a nice way. It was just like there's a big push on where people are told to accept Philippine culture, but at no point does anybody mention that we already have our own. Um, because the fact is, it should be uh, respect of both cultures, not roll over and just take it because um, that's what they want you to do. That's not what we're here for. That's not what this is about. It's about a union of two people. The next thing is is things like um, family issues. You need to make it clear that anything that is going to affect the relationship or has a financial impact or whatever it is, is an issue that you need to be aware of. Because a lot of the issues are done in the background. You don't know about it. You don't hear about it. Um, there might be financial things happen uh, where some lame excuse uh, is made. Um, I've seen it happen to people and it's, it's, it's not nice because your partner is not trying to lie to you but feel obligated sometimes. Um, for example, if a, a relative sick, they might you you might be the um, the only people that are capable of helping in an emergency. But if you said, no, we ain't doing any of this, it's not our problem, um, your partner might still do it. And they might send their wages and then say, I got robbed on the way home. You know, I'm not joking. This is the sort of stuff that happens. And you'll be trying to find out who stole the money, but the fact is they sent it to a relative. So you need to make the importance of communication, the key element of the relationship. Without good communication, uh, uh, good communication, the relationship will fail, without a doubt. And I see it all the time where guys are like, "Well, she does what she wants." Blah blah. blah. Yes, she does. Uh, she's having an affair behind your back. Everybody knows about it, but you, because you're too stupid to even realize that you're actually driving your your wife to do something that she um, wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, it's just that some of these guys are just idiots. You know, they're they're there um, for themselves. You know, in every way possible. Then they complain when it all goes sour. So. Communication is key, very, very key, and saying, look, if there's a problem, we talk about it. Because even if your wife can sort it herself, the fact is communication between you two is alleviating stress from your partner because she's not feeling that she's hiding something from you. She's not feeling that she's alone in some of these things because some of them you have to deal with, whether you like it or not. You can say, I ain't doing this, blah, blah, blah. but at some point there will be stuff you can avoid. So communication, big thing. Um, the next thing I would suppose is respecting each other. I see some of these women that will just be standing next to their, their husband will be talking to me, and then they'll be standing there texting to their friends or whatever. The, you know, the girls like not even interested in what's going on around her. Where's the respect? It's disrespectful for me, but also disrespectful for the guy. Because the fact is, his wife hasn't even taken into account that there's a conversation going on that she might even be part of. Because she doesn't care. Um, those are normally low-educated women that are cash flow hungry. 
I won't waste my time on them personally. Um, at the same time, the guy that sits there and doesn't really get involved in what their wife's doing is doing exactly what that woman was doing with the old mobile phone. And I've seen that. I've seen the guys that start drinking at 10 a.m. until they they fall down. They that is not life that is getting wasted <laughs> it's not what you went there for so why get into that rut take an interest in what your wife's doing one of the things um, I recommend is that's what your wife wants to do in her life she will tell you she wants to do whatever you want to do but doesn't mean you, that's where it stops you say well didn't you want to finish college or did you want to go back to college or did you want a small business did you, you know do you want to travel stuff has to be prized out sometimes and the fact is you're taking the time to do that is putting value on the relationship because you're not seeing um, you're not seeing your wife is just somebody she's your wife because the, the thing is a lot of the time in the family relationships with the parents and everything else they're pushed down all the time so they're, they're not used to that independence so, and the thing is I know a lot of guys that are paranoid about the wives becoming too independent especially if they go to the west and I'm like so what you know what your wife is your wife if you want to um, keep somebody in a cage get a canary if you're not entering into the relationship properly you cannot complain with the outcomes um, and that's why I say you know communication is the key to all of it because there's certain things my wife wants to do and I make them happen there's certain things I want to do my wife doesn't complain about it because at the end of the day my wife's content because I look after my wife I look after our family and it's all about communication it all comes back to communication in some form because it's not monetary. Monetary comes secondary or even tenth on the list because a lot of women will stick with you even if you have no money in your pocket. The reason being is nearly every, nearly every other guy that they've known never had any money in their pocket. So, <laughs> so the, the fact is you come along um, and they'll stick with you through thick and thin. But that's marriage. That's a real marriage. Um, and that's something that it's quite important to me because I'm not religious but that contract um, is important to me because I refused to get married before because I believe in the West too many people take it too lightly me I'm getting married once and that's it there is no second marriage so all comes back to communication but also the responsibility the uh, commitment from both sides and look at things long term look at how you're going to develop the relationship discuss it with your wife discuss it with your girlfriend see where they want to be in five years time see where they want to be in ten years time and see where you want to go discuss that with them because if you want somebody to be part of your life this stuff is normal and I know guys they don't even know what they're doing tomorrow but at the same time they don't focus on anything but at the same time, they cannot focus if everything uh, focus on complaining. Well, they do uh, when things go wrong. But I think it's all about that commitment to each other, the responsibility, and taking the time to understand each other. And you will get the family issues in the background, but that's why you get it all done and dusted at day one. I'm not paying for the next twenty kids in the family to go through school they're not my kids they're not related to me not my problem sounds a bit harsh but at the end of the day it's being honest and you didn't you didn't buy the family you know because this is the other thing is people assume you're buying into a relationship with them. you're marrying somebody that you love money isn't even involved they have to um, acknowledge your culture the family don't like it tough um, I know I mean that in a way of being stern but um, you need to set the ground rules of day one because of the 
if they think like, oh well, they get married and you're going to be providing for little Johnny to go to school, and when he becomes a drunk and has five kids, you're going to support the entire family. Knock it on the head at day one. Um, there's nothing worse than having village idiots. Uh, even more though, even more so when you're funding them, uh, which I do in the tax system already. Um, so just communicate. All right, thanks.